We're glad to know you're still there and we welcome you back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're being joined by our guests for this morning to deal with the headlines on our national dailies in the person of Mr. Chris Kende Nwandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He's talking to us from Lagos, Nigeria. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Okay, uh, so we're, we're looking at the papers, interesting headlines here, and we're starting with the Punch newspaper. Um, the first story on that, or the leading headline there is, military police vow tough actions for ballot box snatchers, others. Uh, they're talking about off-season polls that is happening in um, uh, Bielsa, uh, Imo, and... Um, where else is it happening? In Kogi State, yeah, these three states. Uh, offices and elections are happening, and the military and the police are vowing tough action for ballot box snatchers and others. Let me hear your comments on uh, that. Let's just take one after the other. Yes, um, once again, good morning. Yes, um, talking about do people still snatch ballot boxes? I thought that uh, that's uh, something of the past because by the new electoral act and by how far we've grown in our electoral system, uh, the issue of ballot buses doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But yes, you drop your, uh, your uh, Tom, uh, Tom printed um, uh, ballot papers and the bus, but don't forget that these things don't electronically most of the time. So uh, whether you like a snatch or the ballot buses, it has already been captured the, with the electronic device. Uh, your voting has been captured by the electronics, and then, so it's whether it is in the in the past that you see people snatching ballot boxes and going around and messing up the effects. Which what I can have now, if they stick to the rule and they stick by their rules, then definitely that is uh, unnecessary. So uh, I hope that I will be able to stick to the electoral act and be able to transmit results uh, real time as they promise uh, during the. Uh, 2023 election, which uh, uh, they fumbled uh, with, especially when it came to that of presidential election. But we've seen it uh, in some off-season uh, election in some states uh, for the general election where INEC was performed. So the assurances has to come from INEC that they'll be able to do the right thing. Then you're talking about also uh, security or uh, level of insecurity. Yes, all eyes will be in these three states, could be Bayesa and Imo State. But it is good because it is an off-season election, unlike what we had earlier in the year, where the election took place in 36 states of preparation, as well as um, the FCT. So the security agencies were stretched uh, to their limits, and um, that in itself poses a lot of effects. For off-season election, just three states, I think we have enough security to handle that. And good enough, uh, I, I just came back from great states. I uh, was uh, there for about four days, station of Inspector General of Police. Uh, the, the police invited me as one of the editors to, uh, to witness the uh, conference and retreat for senior police officers from the ranks of uh, Commission of Police to the IDP. Uh, and it was a robust uh, uh, retreat and conference. And the IDP, I got the to use the opportunity to reassure Nigerians that this three states will be well secured. And one troublemakers who want to commit trouble during this election stay clear of Kogi, uh, Bayesa, and Limo State. Yes, it's one thing to be able to give that. Whether the gladiators in the process will be able to help by that uh, is what we don't know. But I hope that because if you look at the reports coming in from Bayesa and Limo State, uh, it's not been so palatable. Some instances, some of these states are very, very volatile when it comes to election uh, issues and this security. But I hope this um, election will come go without any level of uh, threat uh, to the security of um, electors. Because if the electors know that their, their life is not secure, then they're going to have serious voter party, and that is going to affect the. Uh, uh, the result of that election. So the security agencies are giving the necessary chances to so, so. Yeah, that's the thing. We do hope that uh, it's going to be like INEC is saying, because uh, like you observed, if INEC uh, sticks to the rule, they are going to, all this ballot box snatching will not be 
uh, even a thing. But will they stick mm. to the rules? Because we, uh, the experience we had in the past election, the one early this year, did not show that INEC was willing to stick to the rules, in particular elections anyway. And then the police also seemed to be compromised. It's not just because they were stressed, uh, but um, they seemed to be compromised. But again, uh, maybe because the numbers were not much, they were also trying to guard against uh, their be coming to any harm and all that, because a lot of things that happened in that election, uh, they didn't show that the police were even prepared enough, and INEC was prepared enough uh, for some of these things. But we do hope that they're going to stick to that. But that same headlines on the Guardian newspaper says, less than 30% registered voters will decide by Elsa Imo Kogi poll. That's the leading headline on the Guardian newspaper concerning election, the off-season election. Now, what does this say about... Um, our electoral process because in the February 25 election for instance the percentage of people that came out to vote was so much so massive uh, that uh, we felt that electoral system or uh, the process is going to take a new look but now 30 percent just 30 percent is a very minimal number that gives me worry that we're going back to the days where uh, nobody took election mat election matters seriously yeah, there are so many factors. The first thing has to be that if you look at the election, this uh, a segmented election, sort of, um, it's already happening about three states, and just there for governorship, there are governorship election, uh, for governorship election. The one that happened uh, earlier in the year, you know, that is president, we had the presidential, and that in itself had so much at stake. So a lot of people took out to vote uh, during that election, not only the the presidential, we had state um, elections, the national assembly, as well as state houses of assembly. Uh, but that is not going to be the case. This one is strictly for governorship um, mm -hmm. elections. So the stake is not uh, is not as high as it was uh, uh, earlier in the year. And two is also that uh, we also that uh, as I said, voter party when people lose trust in the system, that in itself as, uh, affects people's enthusiasm to come out and vote. These people that voted earlier in the year uh, felt that uh, they were shortchanged and that their vote didn't count, or doesn't count. So does it then does it that some people will not be able to come out again to vote. The third one may also be that when you look at some of the, um, the fact that it is the court that now decides election, not the uh, uh, electorate. And that in itself is a dangerous trend in our political system because a situation where people go to the uh, go to the polling unit, go to some uh, and vote for their candidates, only for them for the court to obtain that over technicalities and the rest of them, that puts a lot of pressure on people and it, it reduces people's confidence within the system, the political system. So if I soon I voted for somebody and then I believe that he won, only for the person to lose at the courts, then then there's a problem. If you come in to come and vote again, then definitely I may not just have it. I'm not willing to come and vote. So those are the some of these things. So I want to be able to sort that in. And this is why I'm talking about I need doing the right thing. Because I, when you see some of the budgets and see what is going on, you come to realize that some of, most, some, if not most of these issues were um, caused by INEC and also uh, pre-election uh, uh, matters as it were. But we have to find a way of making that people's confidence, we reduce people's confidence in the electoral system so that they have the confidence. You can hardly see this happening across the world, the United States, the United Kingdom, and most advanced countries of the world. After election, yeah, there will always be disputes here and there. Remember what happened um, during the Biden and uh, Trump, um, um, uh, the presidential election in, uh, in the United States. Uh, we had Trump was saying that, oh, he was rigged, it was not. But they have a system that is so confident that we look at it and it's so transparent that nothing anybody can do about it. Nobody could do anything about it. Um, uh, Donald Trump. This gate is as clear to it. anybody can go into the system and check how people voted. So, on to, we want to bring that to bear in our electoral system. You continue to have this level of voters apart. And that is the truth. Okay, another thing that I feel is connected is back to the Punch newspaper now. Uh, there is a headline saying, INEC delays trial of 197 electoral offenders. The election in Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo State is in four days. And these people are not being prosecuted. Some of these people could have been sent to jail 
as a, a de to serve as a deterrent to others that might want to do the kind of things that these same people did. But it has been delayed. Now, the prosecution will come uh, possibly after, in fact, it will come after the election. So, which means nobody gets to see what is done to offenders, electoral offenders. I don't know whether you see it the way I'm seeing it. Do you think this is a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, I see it. Um, but you also have to put into cognizance the fact that um, the power of prosecution doesn't lie with I swear. It's the security agents that are supposed to prosecute. And so, and INEC, to a large extent, doesn't have the capacity to be able to prosecute all these people. So, they have to work in hand in hand with security agents, especially the police, to be able to make sure that. And let me give a classical example. The, I know, the you, I'm sure you have been reading reports about the the, the suspended uh, wreck in Adamawa. Yeah. That is being prosecuted. He was invited by the courts. He refused to appear. This just happened a few days ago. He, he refused to appear before the court. And the only to make it was this man is a lawyer. He's a qualified lawyer. He's, he's a lawyer. He's a member of the MBA. And he refused to um, to appear in court. So something must be amiss somewhere. So I totally agree with you, yes, that uh, except we start prosecuting some of the electoral offenders, then this issue will bet. Is it only the, is it only with election? Ask yourself what happened to all the Boko Haram uh, members that were arrested for uh, for insecurity and for um, killings and bombings um, all over the country. Running into thousands of that, how many of them have been brought before the court? How many of them have been prosecuted? With last government said that they were going to publish the financials of um, insecurity in Nigeria. How many names were published? How many were prosecuted? They say all those that were arrested for uh, terrorism were prosecuted. How many were prosecuted? So those are the so those are the level of impunity in the system. And if we don't have the political will to be able to prosecute some of this, that is why most of them get so embodied and do the kind of things. There have been one or two convictions here and there. I know there was one in Akwai Bomb uh, um, and I, I had an INEC or whatever, one of the professors that was uh, uh, caught in, in the electoral malpractices that were prosecuted. But, but that is just a drop in the ocean. So we have to move on. I personally feel that we should have a special court um, uh, for these electoral offenses. So I'll be spinning the uh, Awashon uh, in prosecuting them. Just taking them to the normal courts, it, it slows down the system. You know the system within the courts. It takes time. We don't have enough judges to be able to. And even then, they have so many cases. That, and it's not only electoral um, matters they are dealing with. They are dealing with uh, criminal cases. They are dealing with theft. They are dealing with fraud. They are dealing with so many cases. So it becomes so, why you see the kind of level of uh, uh, the level of progress we are making in the courts as well as the tribunals. Is because there are special tribunals for electoral malpractice, um, election matters, and that is why. And also, the constitution has given a time frame for which these issues to be dealt with: ninety days, sixty days, uh, three months, or unlike before. You know, before um, electoral matters could take about two, three, four years at times to be able to settle. But now, the, with the new electoral act, it has been specified as to how and when the issues of election matters can be settled at the lower tribunals, at the Court of Appeal, and at the Supreme Court, which is why you saw that the Supreme Court was able to give a judgment on the issue of the presidential election as quickly as possible. In the past, we had some of, those, some of this judgment being given after three years, and that was not good enough. Mm. Okay, uh, well, we, go, we, we continue with uh, another headline here. Um, we know that we've seen that soldiers are showing um, force in patrol, uh, in Kogi, um, Bayelsa, and an Imo state. But that's not what really is concerning me right now. It's what concerns me is the court rejects Akere Dolu lawmaker suit against Ayeda Tiwa. It's still going on. The problem in Ondo state is still going on. And I, I don't know. Uh, speak to that, please. You are a lawyer yourself. I, th I thought that the, we were told that uh, the APC have settled the matter and uh, the gladiators have been asked to shoot their. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what's going on. Yes, yes. you remember the APC national chairman visiting uh, mm. the state, talking to the gladiators, but the gladiators and uh, it's obvious that um, that was a piece of the graveyard, and they did not agree to that. So what we are saying now is that um, 
each of them are digging it. But the fact remains that there are constitutional provisions on how to remove a governor or a deputy governor. Any other thing around that is complete uh, fallacy. You cannot do it. Some have tried it in the past and backfired. It was done in uh, it was done in uh, an Ambra state um, uh, against a P2B. It failed. It was done in uh, in this um, Ekiti state against uh, uh, was the former governor Ekiti Spayoshe, and uh, he was moved and he failed. So the for the uh, for the legislators to be able to do that, they have to go through the processes, and the processes is just well established in, in, in our constitution. You have to be able to uh, come up with uh, allegations as it were, then be able to justify that you have to raise a, a panel as a, a chief judge to raise a panel to investigate after that. So it's the process is there. But the fact remains that this same state, this same state, this same Ondo state, there was this issue between this same governor and his former um, deputy. I think his, his name was, uh, was Abola or something like that. And this is true, and they were able to remove that deputy governor, who was a deputy to uh, Governor uh, Akiri Dulu, until the end of his first tenure. So we are seeing um, the same thing. We are seeing lightning striking on the same spot. But to me, the, irrespective of all the shenanigans that I do, the question still remains where is Governor Utimi Akiri Dulu of the state? Yeah, well, we have. In one, of the way, in one of our uh, interventions, one of them, um, when I appear with. Yeah. Governor Adobe has remained in Ibadan or your state. Mm. Can a governor preside over his state from another state? I think that one we should that is what should be worried is uh, the state has to have some, uh, of assembly. Why is it that their governor is not in Ondo state? Why is it that he is in Ibadan? Uh, that should be in, in, in other crimes, uh, uh, an impeachment procedure would have been would have started doing uh, over this issue. He's, uh, he's back in the country, he was away for about three months. Then after that, he came back. Since he came back to Nigeria, has not stepped foot on, in, in, on those things. And that should be worrying the members of the House of Assembly. And not all these ridiculous allegations that being made are meant uh, uh, leveled against the deputy governor. I think that should be the way. Governance to me is a total as Governance is, this is governance in diaspora, and which is not allowed in our constitution. Uh, well, the presidency said the president can rule from any place that he wants to, any part of the, the world. And also the people in Ondo State, the lawmakers have said that their governor can rule from any uh, part of the world, that it is it's, uh, it's not condemned by the constitution. That's what they said. Maybe no. it should be no. spelled out that, and criminalized. No. no, that is wrong. Because, because of all this, case, that is why you know the problem started with during the Yaradwa um, administration, when Yaradwa had a, a issue with his health and he was out of country, and he refused to transmit power to his deputy, uh, his vice president, who was Wilma Jonathan. Jonathan. So, and that trip down for a long time, and that um, the um, governance was practically left in the hands of Turai, the wife, and uh, 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 um, AGF Andoka. Yes, that was this thing, AGF Andoka. And Governance was practically crippled in Nigeria. And because of that, the National Assembly came up with the amended the constitution and given it a new way that if a governor is a, a president or governor is going to travel out of the country for a certain period, then he has to transmit uh, wow. power to his deputy or vice. And that is for a period. I think that's in that period is not supposed to say, I don't know more of this now, but I think it's about 60 days or thereabout. So, if the governor had been out of state, the state for that period, yes, we can govern from anywhere, but it's for a specific period. And he said that there must be transmission of power. You must transition. So, if he's out of um, the, state, uh, the state for a certain period, over and above what was rightly um, stated in the because then it is an aberration. There is no district. So, saying that oh, he can govern from, of course, that is not true. You cannot just govern from anywhere. You can say, as well, say that the president of Nigeria can go and, and, and be living in London. I and mean, no, it is that is completely wrong. That has been taken care by the constitution. And whoever is uh, uh, brandishing that is just making a mockery of our constitution as it's been. Perhaps that's why it's all this is happening, so that it will be like the deputy governor is incapable of, of taking the reins of power. Uh, that's so the governor can still rule from anywhere. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe 
uh, the, the Constitution all, only talked about getting out of the country. But here, Ondo is a, a neighbor. I, I understand there was a time when, very uh, recently, uh, where the Southwest governors went to visit him in his house in Ibadan. And it, it seemed like a normal thing. And then the deputy governor, who is resident in Ondo State, is being, like some people will put it, being witch hunted uh, by the political class, maybe a cabal that is taking care of the government and governance in the absence of the, 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 the governor. But my concern is. In the sense, uh, sense absence from the state, it's not, uh, I don't think there was any specific that's whether you are traveling to Japan or Mexico okay. or Zimbabwe. Yes, it, 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 that is not the issue. It's saying that if you are not within it, you know that everything in, everything in law has to do, we talk about jurisdiction. Mm. Okay? Everything about law is about jurisdiction. If you are going to court and you're taking a case to a court that doesn't have the jurisdiction for that case, then it's as good as not, not having that case. There because if you do, if you raise the, uh, there's an obligation raised on jurisdiction, the first thing, the judge will stop and be able to consider the issue of jurisdiction for that case. So if he doesn't have the power to be able to adjudicate on that, because there are certain, let me, I'm just telling you, there are certain cases that you, that made for the high courts, mm. not for the magistrate courts, not for the customary courts. Okay, so if you take that case to a customary court or, uh, or, or to a magistrate court, of course, the judge in charge we have to tell you that he does not have jurisdiction i'm sure you must have read that several times in the papers or in this statement because he does not have jurisdiction so he has to now send that case to a court of competent judicial to talk about competent jurisdiction so in terms of jurisdiction the jurisdiction of the government is within the state is the state in government so you can't still live in Lagos and say yeah, I'm, I'm governing you remain in Lagos and you say you are the governor of my state of him. How, how possible? For how long? No, 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 I don't, I don't think so. The fact, but the fact is that the legislative arm is in, just like the local government chairman, they are in the pocket of the, the governor. So uh, the governor practically determines who becomes a, a member of the state house of assembly or, or chairman. So anything that governor says, that's what happens. So there but is, no there, is there no group, no group that can can go into the matter and because if he's not supposed to be out of his state for a period of time and he has been out of his state and uh, more than this time that was given by uh, the constitution and like you said the people in the house of assembly are in his pocket can't another higher body uh, be responsible of addressing this issue maybe the national assembly or something can any governor just do what he likes because uh, the people in the national in the in the state assembly are in his pocket? That's why we say we have to think out with this constitution. We continue to think out. There's no constitution that is uh, it's so solid that it, that is not prone to amendment. Even the constitution of the United States that was put to be hundred years continuously they amend it. Now constitutionally, the only body that can remove the governor the state house of assembly, no order. Except on election matters that you see that the tribunal or court that bets. Apart from that, there is no other way. And it spells uh, out to be this thing: you can capacitate it, uh, blah 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 blah. This is, all that have been stated. Any other person, nobody can go to buy and say, "Remove my go this government." Nobody can do it. It is only the state house of assembly that has been empowered by the Lord to do that, and they are the only ones that can do it. So if they don't need that job, there is nobody that can do that. So it's not a question of you going to court. And say yes, we can look at the provisions of the law as affect this issue. You can go to court to mandate the state house of assembly to do its job as it were. But if they are not willing to do it, what do you do? Hmm. So uh, you can't go to court and say, "Oh, uh, the Supreme Court." That is why you have. That, that's why you see they have immunity. They have immunity. The governor, the deputy governor, have immunity, just like the president and vice president. So it is within the um, powers of the Ondo State House of Assembly to do it if they think that is necessary, which I think is necessary as it were now. But are they doing it? I don't think they have what it takes to do that. Mm, that's serious. So the states are yes. so independent that governors can do what they like. And if you are able to buy the local government chairman, buy the State House of Assembly members, then you are a lord in your state. Uh, like you said, maybe something needs to be done about the Constitution to, to bring about some of the things that we think are going wrong in our country.
Uh, well, this one, I don't know how this will sound like news, but um, the state government, Lagos state government, in August, precisely on the 2nd of August, made an announcement that uh, the bus fares in BRT as a way of palliative will be slashed by 50%. And it went on, and people were flocking to the BRT terminals to take these buses because at least it helped them to save some more money. Now, it was announced again that they are going to remove the 50% rebate that was given. So you would pay the actual price. And we had that experience. We went there, found out that these things have already begun. So where you are paying 250, you are now paying 500. Where you are paying uh, 150, you are now paying 300. It's happening already. Today, the governor has said that from tomorrow, or yesterday, the governor said from tomorrow, because of public outcry, the fares are going to be reduced again by 25%, no longer 50%. So they are meeting the public halfway, 25% it will be reduced. I, I don't know if you have a comment about that. Palliatives are until something good has come. But I don't know if something good has come that we are not seeing, but this thing that was supposed to help us uh, until... We stabilize, you know, fuel, fuel problem, the transportation problem and all that is going to be removed, even if they are adding 25%. But has, has anything been done that you have seen that should make someone say, okay, this help I was giving you because you lost that other one, uh, I'm taking it back? Well, all my life, I've never gotten any quality from government, all my life. And so, uh, even till now, the little one that I, I was getting, or we were getting, yeah, which is the oil subsidy, the petroleum subsidy, uh, which you and I have been enjoying over the years, mm. that is the only subsidy, that is the only palliative that I know the government has given Nigerians, that I know cross across, but that has been removed. And um, this so called, I've said it that um, this so called palliative being uh, given and being uh, Managed by the government, with the federal and state government, to me is what you call a local balance audio. I understand what you, I, I hope you understand what I mean. When mm. we say audio, no, when they talk audio, say, ah, this one audio money. That's what it is. But coming back to that of Lagos State government, yes, the government um, said that they were going to reduce the uh, cost of um, transportation, especially when it comes to BRT and even the uh, uh, Blue Ray, uh, Ray, about 50%, uh, just to be able to reflect. You said that um, they are coming back now to say no, that has been restored. Okay, it's going to be 25% based on public card. I'm pretty forgotten that the government and uh, the NURT or whatever they call them, the legal state, at a point said that acts of, um, of, um, uh, of transportation in Lagos. And the unions agreed that they were going to do that. But nothing was done. Absolutely nothing was done about that. So, um, that the government coming now to, they are just using it as a way of just uh, assuaging people and just making them to see reason. But the government, in its wisdom, feel that we have done enough, which I believe is not enough. Um, and then we drop the subsidy. I am not, the question you ask yourself, what is the government, I'm talking of government generally in Nigeria subsidizing, I'm not just talking of Lagos State government. Because across the world, that the citizens enjoy some elements of subsidy. It could be in agriculture, it could be in transportation, it could be uh, in power, uh, power, electricity, it could be gas, it could be so many other things. None. Just points one single thing which Nigerians are enjoying as uh, as subsidy. Even the petrol, even the petroleum, even the crude oil that uh, we're supposed to be enjoying some level of, of subsidy because we are one of the highest producers of crude oil in the world. But what are we have is we're having the short side of the stick, short end of the stick, and that is what it is. And that is why I've said that all these palliatives um, that the government has been spending trillions and trillions of naira um, is just for me, it's not worth it. It is this same country that somebody was told us that they are feeding our children during COVID, and trillions and trillions of naira we are spent feeding our children, our children that we are told with us that we are feeding, they said they were feeding them. And that is high. Le that is level of corruption within the system. So that the Lagos State government, uh, about that they even give twenty five percent to me. They are, they are trying. Some other states don't even do that at all. Some other states don't even have any provision 
for transportation for their uh, this thing, uh, for their people. So uh, they should be commended, but I think they can still do more. I, I still believe that the Lagos State government have the capacity to leave it at uh, 50% um, until uh, the reasonable time where people can be able to adjust that. Don't forget that no salary have not been increased. Their salary have not been increased. Um, even the so-called palliatives, they said they are going to increase people. It's not getting to the people. So, but it's not something that is surprising to me. I, I knew that this day would come, and uh, it, only that it came just too early, as it were. Okay, uh, let's move to the Guardian newspaper now. The Guardian newspaper says that um, uh, U.S. government travel advisory hurtful to Nigerian economy, says IG. You remember that the U.S. has said that uh, uh, there are some places, especially in hotels in very big cities, uh, that may see some problems in, in, in the coming days, so that people should be careful about it. So uh, the federal government is saying that it's very hurtful to the economy because people cannot come to do investment in the uh, country. But what do you think about the U.S. travel advisory and how it affects us? Well, this is not the first time they are saying that. Practically, it almost it has now become a monthly uh, issue and um, statement. That the advisory is for their people, it's for US, U.S. citizens coming to Nigeria. They should be careful of places to go to and rest. But um, <laughs> Nigeria is not at war. I, I think that statement should be sent to U.S. citizens going to Ukraine, U.S. citizens going to Israel, and U.S. citizens going to uh, Sudan and Somalia and places that um, practically are at war and where the high level of insecurity is at the high. But it is also good to, um, to give that uh, to their citizens because even we, as uh, let us not uh, shy away from the fact that we have uh, some high level of insecurity. I, for one, am from Imo State. Ask me when last was I in State, if not for the one I went last. Because of the high level of insecurity, as the, a lot of people from the southeast don't go home again because of the so-called unknown government, because of the killings. Many people in the northeast, senators, the, those in government, and so, don't go. There are some people that I know that are from Bonu State and part of the northeast that have not traveled for the past eight years to their villages, and that's a fact. So uh, those advisories are yes, it's, it's good, but we also have to look inward and make sure that we're able to. Uh, handle our own situation properly and be able to tackle the issue of insecurity as we are. We just have a, a supplementary budget that was just released. The highest vote um, on that budget is going for security, is for the sake for security. And you continue to ask yourself for how long we can. Other sectors like health, education, infrastructure, roads, and, um, and so many other uh, areas are suffering because of insecurity. So if we are, we are predicating much of our budget um, to service and security issues, then that is a problem. We should be by now, we should be able to have dealt with issue of insecurity and they deal with it squarely so that we can be able to challenge this money to other critical areas. As I said, education, health. A lot of Nigerians are having serious health challenges now. The prices of drugs have gone so high that many people cannot afford to take care of themselves. Just yesterday, you heard that about um, a non uh, actor, uh, Mr. Ibu, uh, um, that his leg was uh, amputated because he couldn't, uh, he, he, he was looking for money to be able to take care of her. So, he, although he has some challenges, which deteriorated to that, but even at that, at the point, he was asking for assistance, and uh, but um, now he, he has lost one leg. But that is just Mr. Ibu. There are so many other Nigerians, ordinary malaria, some people cannot be able to. Do you know that some people cannot make 500 naira a day in Nigeria? So if you fall ill, no malaria tab, no malaria subject of malaria tab that goes for less than 1,000 naira. So how will we do? So those are the areas that we should be looking at and be able to turn out our minds that our government should be looking at. And not just what the USA is saying that. Are we doing enough to even attract foreign investment in Nigeria into Nigeria? What is our what of our power sector? We are struggling between 4,000 megawatts and 5,000. Of in a country of over 200 million people, the SMEs are practically dying. Is that the, is, is it the U.S. adversary that is causing that? I think um, uh, the yes, uh, yes, in as much as the U.S. and other countries will raise such alarms, but let us in water. Then putting it for that also, you can ask. There's no way in the world where we don't have security. Just few days ago, a one man just woke up and and shot 18 um, Americans dead. 
on the day one swift. Nigeria government didn't ask uh, Nigerians not to go to US because of that. I think the issue that we need more cooperation as more assistance for our partners as it were. But let us look in what and make sure we do what we need. If we put our house our houses right, we'll see people coming here to invest as it were. Okay. Uh, well, is it is it a deliberate effort to sabotage the gains that we may be trying to make and all that? So some questions have been raised. Uh, but the, a funny headline, for me, it's a very, very funny headline here, is that court confirms authenticity of Enugu governor's NYSC certificate. There was this back and forth between NYSC and the governor of Enugu state. And the NYSC was saying, it's not authentic. The Enugu state governor said, it, was, it is authentic. Now... The court has said the Enugu State govern Governor's Certificate is authentic and even uh, awarded 5 million uh, Naira uh, against the NYSC in favor of the governor. And I find it funny, I don't know how you find it, that an institution that is supposed to issue uh, a certificate cannot rec recognize its own certificate anymore. And they're saying whether it is good or it is bad or is authentic or is not authentic. I, I don't know how you feel about that. Yes, the Enugu case is a very funny one. Um, the issue authority ought to be what we call issue authority law is NYC, and that is where I attended Lagos to invest. So the only issue authority on my certificate is Lagos to invest. And so if they say that the certificate they gave me, the one that I am I'm practicing is fake, it is fake. But you have to prove that. Um, so if the DSS said they investigated, like just, you know, at the end of it all, whether we like it or not, the court is what it is. You know, the law is what it is. The law is the law. If at the end of it all, by so that is why we have um, the court. The essence to having a court is to be able to uh, guide against uh, anarchy, uh, break down law and order, and able to put things right. If in the course of the investigation, because the, the, the court in its wisdom have been able to look at the evidence, because the most critical thing in law is what we call evidence. That is why we have, we have what is called the evidence. Everything concerning the law or whatever you bring to court has to be based on evidence. If you don't have enough evidence to be able to prove case, then that is a problem. So if in the, in the eyes of the law, the judge were able to look at all the arguments, both from the NYC, from um, the DSS, from the, um, from the camp of the governor, um, governor Mba, and say that this, what this young man had is an authentic certificate, that is what it is. If you think that the lower court did not do it, as a, then you have a, you have a right of appeal. That was at the court of, um, that's a high court. They have a right of appeal to go to the court of appeal and subsequently to the Supreme Court. But for what it is now, what the law states that, as far as the court of law have said that that, um, that certificate is genuine, that is what it is. Except in other courts, a higher court for a case that the judge But, but it's, it's really, like I said, it's, it's funny. If... Let me tell you, let, let me say this. Let me say this. Yeah. Let me say this. And that is always the problem that most people have. In law, there's a difference between morality and law. Yeah. What most times people feel is, is morality. The law is different from morality. What you think is right is different from what the court says. So, yes, yeah, morally right. Oh, how can he say that uh, the certificate he has? Uh, but you have to come to the court to prove it. And if the court says that, is it, then that is what it is. You can say any other thing. Any other thing. Um, look at the, what happened with the, the, the case of uh, Messi Omar or whatever. Mm. Um, that young girl yeah. uh, that was um, came up with a jam resort and uh, she was saying everything practically. Oh no, it's authentic. In fact, that the public opinion was almost eighty percent in her favor. But at the end of it all, Jab was able to prove that she falsified that. At the end of it all, she she owned up and said yes. It was a, but before then, public opinion has always been, oh, they want to victimize a young girl. It's because she's a young girl. She's because of this part of the country. She was So many people, even the educated people within the society believe the girl. They say, how can this small girl they do that? They, oh, she got it. But at the end of it, after the investigation, Jam was able to prove and show that what she had was a fake one that what she was producing. At the end of it, everybody kept quiet. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's my is, problem. That, that is the problem so, that I'm having right now because... Jam had 
everything that will show that the girls, uh, the girls falsified the results. Why couldn't Wayek, if they had this doubt, provide this thing? There are two things that, that, that give me concern. It's either that Wayek was right and the courts have done some abracadabra, or uh, Wayek was wrong, and why would they be wrong? So it, it just yeah. gives me concern. That's why I'm the saying not even public opinion this time. The owners, owners of proof is on Wayek. Or not, not on the government. Yeah. The owners of proof. That's what I'm saying. You agree with? I totally agree with you. And in criminal cases, we say that it must be proof beyond reasonable doubt. Underline that word. That is what the court. That is what the law says. It must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. Any single that needs to doubt that is not proved beyond reasonable doubt, then it cannot. It, it does not hold up. So it is for why If if um, um, sorry, let's not leave why It's not why It's NY. It's NY. Let's miss it up. It's not why it is NYC. If the NYC was not able to prove it beyond reasonable court before the judge and before the court, and that is what it is. So once the court has satisfied that this this NYC certificate or whatever that this guy is uh, is the writing, that is what to say. If a, an NYC or any other person uh, feels otherwise, they still have the right to go to the court of appeal. At the end of court of appeal, you still have the right to go to the Supreme Court. And once the Supreme Court is um, able to give verdict on that, that is what it is. If you have any other doubt, you can just appeal to God. Okay, well, it's, it's interesting, really interesting. The, 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 law, the law is a very dynamic, uh, dynamic thing. Uh, very confusing as well, if you, if you ask yeah, me. That's what it means. It's very confusing. It's all about language. That's what they say, the law is an ass. That is, I'm sure you heard that several times. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Now, um, there, is, there is this um, uh, address that uh, the uh, Labour Party candidate made, a, a press statement that he made, and said that uh, the Supreme Court breached Nigerians' trust in the judiciary, uh, that's Peter Obi, uh, that's on daily independence. And then he has been replied by the presidency and says that the court does not rule on public opinion. Uh, just like you said now, uh, but I don't know. Some of them, uh, okay, the presidency is saying he didn't even have right to, to do any address because it was a clear-cut uh, case that has been decided and he shouldn't have even mentioned anything anymore. Uh, but Peter Obi uh, did say something concerning the judgment. Uh, what do you say about the back and forth between the federal government and the candidate of the Labour Party in the last presidential election? It's just in that is the court we are discussing this morning, and what uh, <laughs> is this? Uh, as it were, uh, but it is good, you know, that in this part of the world we say the court is the last hope of the common man, not only of the common man, but also the rich man, as it were. Um, the case of um, the presidential election had been decided, the Supreme Court has given its verdict, and that is where it rests. Just my last statement. In, in my last intervention, saying that I'm not satisfied with the Supreme Court. The only other thing you can be is to appeal to court. And it's only God you can appeal to. That is where it ends. And, um, and there must always be an end to litigation. And what is, that is why we have the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has given verdict on that. Whether we like it or not, whether you agree with them or not, that verdict is what it is. Uh, you can now, yes, you are talking about, uh, there's a difference between the law and public opinion. Mm. And, and I also talk about morality. Yes, uh, the fact is that public opinion does this swear the, the verdict of the court. Well, to a large extent, to some extent, yes, it could, because the judges are justices, I'm talking to the Supreme Court now. The justices of the Supreme Court are human beings. They live in our society, they see what happens on every day, they hear, they watch, they are watching, some of them are watching plus TV. <clears throat> as it were, as we're talking, they watch television, they read newspapers, they listen to radio. They, they also on social media, so they see public opinion, they see what people expect. The first thing remains that before them, what they're going to deal with is the fact before them. And it's only based on that fact that they can be able to arrive at their judgments. And, um, and it also has to be based on the evidence that we're hammering on the word evidence, evidence, evidence. It is only based on the evidence, even if the judge knows that what you are saying is wrong or what they are saying. In as far as that did not bring that before 
that case. The judge is not going to give what they ask for, even if it's not so. That's what we call descending in the in, in, into the arena. We don't descend into the arena when it comes to law. I was also what we call a law covering the field. So the judges or justices, as it were, will it sound will it sound wrong to you? Let me put it this way: If the verdict had been in favor of Mr. Peter B or Atiku Abubakar. Will they come out to say what they are saying? Mm. That is what you ask yourself. If the verdict has been has given and Peter B or Atiku Abubakar were declared as the winners of that election, I'm not just justifying what the justices did or what Supreme Court, but I'm just saying it as human beings. Mm. If the justices of this Supreme Court have said, oh, Atiku Abubakar was the winner of the night and then and not collaborate. Of course, the article of Abubakar will come out and praise the Supreme Court. Oh, they've done well. That is the, what we say. Uh, they are the last hope of the common man. So most of them. So the fact is that the, the Supreme Court have um, given their body, whether we like it. What I would, uh, I would rather think, the President, Mr. Peter B, Mr. Atiku Abubakar, whoever other contested the election, is to be able to rally around the President as his will and be able to make sure that we're able to move Nigeria forward. Mm. It is the Nigeria that every one of them want to do. It is Nigeria that they want to preside over. And I don't think any one of them would want Nigeria to disintegrate. They don't want Nigeria to go into uh, abject poverty and the rest of that. So whatever it is, we just have been for three years, three and a half years now to go into the another election. They can go and prepare for another election. Look at where they saw their flaws or where they think that is, and try to make sure that they be able to put their ass together also. Let, let, let me state this as running up on this. If Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar have been together, as uh, you know that Peter Obi moved away from um, um, from PDP. If you look at the votes that Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi got, it was more than that. It is it was more than that of the president. The two, the, if you put the two together, they would have gotten. They, 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 probably one of them would have gotten the presidency as it were. But it was uh, the PDP that um, dismantled his popularity was playing a lot of politics, and was able to give room for the APC, which was very, very unpopular before going to the election because of what President Muhammad Buhari did. Most Nigerians were thinking of probably to vote that APC and look for an alternative, but they didn't have it. That, that the Supreme Court has given his verdict, and that is what it is, irrespective of whatever anybody says, that is the basis that is weird. So, um, Mr. 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 Peter Obis tried to say what he has said. It is his right, his constitutional right. He has the right to say what he said. I think he has the right to say what he said. But that wouldn't change anything. So it's more a public opinion uh, issue that has been as placed now and not just about the law. Again. Okay, that will be all uh, this morning, Mr. Kainde Wandu. Uh, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. Thank you very much for sending me back to, uh, to the school this morning. Oh. Just remind me some of the things I read <laughs> in school. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, it's been on the program this week. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Chris Kende Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He spoke to us from Lagos State here on Off the Press. Uh, we're going to take a, take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at another issue with Mr. Shegun Shokwaton. Stay with us. <laughs>